We have today here in Ghent, uh, Louise and Grant Bentley, and uh, they have been involved in Australia. They're coming from Australia, actually, a long way away, mm -hmm. and we're very thankful that they've taken the time to be here. Sounds so great. firstly, um, Grant and Louise, what have you been doing in the last couple of weeks uh, here in Europe? Well, we're here for a, uh, a series of lectures. We've um, done some lectures in Dubai as well as Moscow, and we've still got um, some lectures in London and then in North America as well, Toronto and Philadelphia to do yet. And so um, that's essentially what brought us here, but also too, to, to make a few uh, contacts and meet the, the faces behind the names of, of um, you know, the publishers and people like yourself. and. Yeah, so that's essentially it. Mm. Right. And how's it been going, Louise? What have you, uh, um, what if, what's the, have you been on form? Well, I don't get to go out the front, which is kind of nice. Grant's the front man, but um, I think a lot of people are aware that um, I do a lot behind the scenes. Um, so uh, we're, we're a bit of a team when it comes to the work yeah. that's been developed, the homeopathic facial analysis. And uh, so my impression so far is that, yeah, that it's certainly starting to gather quite a lot of interest. I mean, it has over the years, but we've sort of um, stepped it up a notch in the last year or two. So um, we're pretty so happy just about maybe, that. Maybe we can discuss a little bit the, the, first, uh, the first book, which is Appearance and Circumstance. Yes. Uh, this is the first one, which has then got a twin brother or a twin sister. That's a, right, a companion a, guy. A companion guy, mm -hmm. that's the way, uh, uh, called Facial Analysis. Um, and then... Um, link it in with the, the latest book just came out a year or two ago called Soul and Survival. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just talk about um, the uh, appearance and circumstance of facial analysis. Yep. Uh, appearance and circumstance was written, oh gee, what about eight years ago or so now? So, yeah. And um, essentially what it was, well we really didn't set out to write a book at all. We, we the, the whole idea was is that I was um, I was teaching undergraduate homeopathy and uh, I was doing what I thought was all the right things and talking about Hahnemann's chronic diseases and, and going through the sixth edition of the Organon and so on. And, but what I realised was that then I would go in the clinic and Hahnemann is quite specific. He, he talks about the whole reason that chronic diseases was written was because um, the, the symptom totality alone is not enough for the continuing treatment of chronic disease. It's very good for uh, acute disease, um, but when you're dealing with chronic disease, there's an added extra that needs to be in the equation that just the symptom totality alone does not provide. But what I found was is that I was, I guess, not taking that into account, not really in a practical way. I was teaching that, but then I would go back into the clinic and I'd select a medicine based on the totality of symptoms. They really had no bearing at all on the miasm. So really what it was, was a, it was a personal study into trying to find, <coughs> excuse me, what my understanding of the miasms were or what I thought Hahnemann meant by the miasms. And it just happened to coincide with a, a, a conference that uh, was, was on in Melbourne at that time and uh, I was asked by somebody if I'd come up and do a talk on, on this in, uh, in Sydney and why don't you bring your book with you and I, we kind of said yeah, yeah, sure, great idea except for the fact that we didn't have one <laughs> and so, so we thought well, let's get our act together and write one but that actually wasn't the objective uh, at the beginning but we knew that we were onto something because we'd been in practice for quite some time and and uh, look the results were okay or what I thought were okay as good as anybody else was getting my colleagues were getting but slowly but surely we began to as we the whole uh, HFA homeopathic facial analysis model began we could see our clinical results rising and as we would accumulate more information that rise was exponential so we knew that we were onto something then um, and essentially it's just coming up with a way that an objective tool of which we can define uh, a miasm and include it into the prescription and what we really like about this is is the fact that it is objective I think it's possibly um, a homeopathy's only objective miasmatic tool the rest of them the ideas are all subjective uh, which I was all well aware of and I was practicing as well but uh, I really like the idea of an objective 
uh, an objective tool. And so appearance and circumstance is really about the development of that model, what that model is, of course, uh, and, and an explanation as to how to use the model as well. What we found, however, is that I, I guess this is why Hahnemann wrote six editions of the organ on and not one, is that um, you learn things along the way and, and not only that, you make mistakes as well. And I didn't think that towards the end, while the photos in the book are still, are still relevant, I don't think they are the best learning tool. Um, so as a result of that, we came up with the second book, uh, which as you can see has um, yes, photographs that display the real life examples of what you're likely to see, but a sketched breakdown of what it is that we're looking at. So it's a far more detailed book as to how to analyse patients' faces. And it becomes really important because, um, as we were saying earlier, the whole uh, idea of, of Hahnemann's miasm theory is, is that if we can fully understand the chronic disease that lies behind uh, the presenting signs and symptoms and match that with the signs and symptoms that the patient has, then we have the approach that we're looking for. It's not based on the similimum only, or at least the similimum on the totality of symptoms, because we already had that. Uh, but he was finding that that didn't work alone. And in just the same way as he started getting better results, so, so too did we. And so that's what these first two books are about. Um, the third book, Soul and Survival, is essentially about, look, it's the follow-on from, for, it's, it's the, all of the philosophy that we've really learned uh, since this. The, the actual practice of HFA has stayed relatively the same, except for um, there are a few details, like we believe that, oh, well, what I've learned along the way is, is that patients display a lot of collective memory when they come under stress, because what we're saying is, is that inside uh, every human being is a stress response. Uh, that stress response is, as nature always does, is, is uh, based on the most frequent si uh, stresses that uh, either a species or in our case human beings have faced. And that's what our survival instinct or our immune system or our defense system, whichever way you want to call it, that's what it has to base itself on. It has to base itself on, on protecting that individual against the most frequently occurring stresses. But of course, nature doesn't play the odds. And what we, what we know is, is that um, if a tiger, for example, starts developing stripes and that helps it hunt better, well then evolution passes on those stripes so the whole species can benefit. And I guess it's taking that broad model of adaptation and evolution and putting it into a human framework. So what we see is, is that human beings have a survival instinct and a, a whole way of coping with frequent stresses that we've faced in the past. And unlike most other creatures, we don't pass on physical traits because our major survival tool is memory and, and, and knowledge. And that's in fact what we pass on. And what I'm saying in Soul and Survival is, is that our unconscious memory is the, uh, is the accumulation of all of these trials and tribulations and all of the effective reactions and strategies that got us out of those trials and tribulations. But are triggered into effect again when a common day stress mimics any sort of danger, we will go into that response. And so this accounts for the fact that why some people will respond so differently to the same stress as somebody else because their instinctive memory is slightly different and it's triggering off a different response. So all of that um, plus there's a bit of a philosophy of how karma fits into homeopathy and that all comes into this. And what uh, anybody understanding the uh, or has read Appearance and Circumstance will know is that we put people into colour groups, which are the old miasms, but uh, we explain why we call them colour groups. And also too, Soul and Survival is an extrapolation of that. Um, so we extrapolate on a, a lot of the different colour group themes to explain why people react the way that they react.